Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on fibromyalgia and the influence of diet on symptoms of fibromyalgia. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about a variety of articles that look at different types of diet and how those types of diet affect fibromyalgia. As a brief background, what is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is actually the most common chronic diffuse musculoskeletal pain syndrome. It is a syndrome of unknown etiology and unknown pathophysiology. We do know that there are no signs of inflammation of the muscles or joints. And what is believed to be occurring in fibromyalgia is that fibromyalgia is a disorder of pain regulation and central sensitization. So what does that mean? So central sensitization is where you can think of the brain and the central nervous system being hypersensitive to stimuli. So it senses stimuli and thinks that it is noxious or painful when it shouldn't be. So there is some issue with hypersensitivity. So if we were to break down the symptoms of fibromyalgia into different categories, what are those categories? The main category here is musculoskeletal. This includes chronic widespread pain and focal points of tenderness. We also see psychiatric symptoms, both within the syndrome of fibromyalgia, but also associated with fibromyalgia. These include depression and anxiety. Depression and anxiety are actually strongly associated with fibromyalgia. We also see eating disorders and self-image issues. And patients with fibromyalgia often have issues with fatigue and sleep disturbances. These are actually critical components of fibromyalgia. And in fact, many patients are often fatigued and easily fatigued. Doesn't take much to make them very tired. And they also have decreased sleep duration and quality. They could have a long sleep, but still feel very tired. And there's also this other category of symptoms, including irritable bowel syndrome and Raynaud's phenomenon. If you want more information on fibromyalgia in general, please check out my lesson on that topic, but I'm going to briefly talk about some of the treatment modalities we use for fibromyalgia patients. So the treatments include the following. Because fibromyalgia is so strongly associated with other conditions like depression and anxiety, it's important to treat those other comorbidities because those comorbidities can be influencing fibromyalgia. And lifestyle modification is critical in treating fibromyalgia as well, including sleep hygiene and exercise. So sleep hygiene is where you don't want to be consuming caffeinated beverages too close to bedtime. You don't want to be exercising too close to bedtime and you want to avoid using electronic devices too close to bedtime as well. And exercise is also a critical component here as well, including core stabilization exercises. If these things don't work, we move on to pharmacological treatments, including tricyclic antidepressants, cyclobenzaprine, and low dose SSRIs or SNRIs. But what has been shown more recently in new evidence and data is that there is positive effects of certain diets on fibromyalgia symptoms and associated conditions. We're going to talk about these certain diets and dietary choices in the next upcoming slides. So we're going to first discuss how certain diets and dietary selections influence pain in fibromyalgia. So the first article we're going to discuss here is entitled A Low Fermentable Oligodimonosaccharides and Polyols or FODMAP Diet is a Balanced Therapy for Fibromyalgia with Nutritional and Symptomatic Benefits. So we know that fibromyalgia is associated with irritable bowel syndrome and oftentimes FODMAP diets are used to treat and improve symptoms in irritable bowel syndrome patients. But what's interesting in this article is that we will see FODMAP diets can also be used to treat other symptoms in fibromyalgia. So in this study, a low FODMAP diet was followed for eight weeks. So they avoided the following from their diet. Dairy products, cereals except for rice, cashews, fruit except for strawberries, kiwi, bananas, citrus, and pineapple. And they avoided vegetables, except for tomatoes, lettuce, carrots, cucumbers, cabbage, and pumpkin. So after eight weeks of following a low FODMAP diet, symptoms of fibromyalgia significantly improved. And in particular, musculoskeletal pain perception improved. So compared to a group that didn't follow this diet, individuals who followed the low FODMAP diet for eight weeks found that their symptoms significantly improved, particularly musculoskeletal pain perception symptoms. Now there have been other diets and dietary selections that have been looked at to see whether they influence pain in fibromyalgia or not. And a lot of them are actually conglomerated in this article entitled, Do Nutritional Factors Interact with Chronic Musculoskeletal Pain? A Systematic Review. So this is a review article looking at many different studies on diets and their possible effects on pain in fibromyalgia. So 
one diet that was studied on pain perception in fibromyalgia was a vegan diet. So a study performed in 2000 by Carton and et al. looked at a vegan diet for three months. So a vegan diet including no meat and no dairy products for three months. And what was found was that there was a significant improvement in pain perception. So there was actually significant improvements in visual analog scale of pain after three months of a vegan diet. And what was interesting was that the improvement in pain perception from the vegan diet actually disappeared when they actually switched back to an omnivorous diet, including meat and dairy products. So in comparison to a group that only ate a vegan diet for three months compared to a group that ate an omnivorous diet for three months, there was improvement in pain perception in the vegan diet group. However, when that vegan diet group switched back to an omnivorous diet, that improvement in pain perception actually disappeared. So very interesting. However, this study was an NCT, a non-randomized controlled trial. So we have to take that into consideration when we look at this data. There was another study looking at whether monosodium glutamate in aspartame-free diet, so a diet with aspartame and monosodium glutamate eliminated from that diet for three months, does that improve fibromyalgia symptoms? And in fact, it was shown to not significantly improve fibromyalgia symptoms. So this article was published in 2014 by Villesca and Latour. It is a randomized controlled trial, so it's stronger evidence. And what was found was that there was no significant impact or effect compared to a normal dietary pattern. So it appears that eliminating monosodium glutamate and aspartame from your diet does not significantly improve fibromyalgia symptoms. So the next group of symptoms we're going to look at is the psychiatric symptoms in fibromyalgia. So the following dietary studies all stem from the finding that patients with fibromyalgia have been demonstrated to have low serotonin levels. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that has been implicated in psychiatric conditions like depression and anxiety. So serotonin is produced from an amino acid, and that amino acid is tryptophan. So tryptophan is an amino acid used to produce serotonin, which is also known as 5-hydroxytryptophan, and is also used to eventually produce the hormone known as melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone produced in the pineal gland that is used to regulate the sleep cycle. So again, tryptophan can be used to produce 5-hydroxytryptophan or serotonin, and ultimately to produce melatonin. So because serotonin is implicated in the psychiatric conditions like depression and anxiety, and melatonin regulates sleep cycles, and we know that patients with fibromyalgia have issues with sleep quality and length, it makes sense to target tryptophan. So increase tryptophan in our diets, maybe that could increase serotonin and melatonin, helping with some of these psychiatric symptoms and those sleep quality issues we see in fibromyalgia. What has also been found and what has been shown is that magnesium may also be associated with some psychiatric disorders and pain regulation as well. So because of all of that, there was a study that was actually just recently published in early 2020 entitled Psychological and Sleep Effects of Tryptophan and Magnesium Enriched Mediterranean Diet in Women with Fibromyalgia. So what they did was they looked at a group of women who were on a tryptophan and magnesium-enriched Mediterranean diet compared to a group of women who weren't. The length of study was 16 weeks, and what they had was they had 60 milligrams of tryptophan and 60 milligrams of magnesium. This was a randomized controlled trial. Important to note here was that the study was only conducted in women, and what they found was that there was no change in quality of sleep. Although there was no change in quality of sleep, looking at this table here, we see that anxiety and depression were actually significantly affected and significantly improved in the treatment group or the tryptophan and magnesium enriched Mediterranean diet group. So the Mediterranean diet actually improved symptoms of anxiety and depression. And it actually improved fatigue indices as well. So although it didn't change the quality of sleep, it had beneficial effects on anxiety and depression and improvement in fatigue as well. So patients reported having less symptoms of anxiety and depression and improved energy. Now the gut microbiome or the populations and proportions of bacterial species living in our gastrointestinal system has become a focus of much research in recent days, specifically on how 
the alterations in the gut microbiome can lead to impacts to our health, including mental health and psychiatric conditions. So there's a question of, does alterations in the gut microbiota brain axis, or GBA, induce or promote psychological symptoms and pain sensitivity? So there was a pilot randomized control trial to explore cognitive and emotional effects of probiotics in fibromyalgia that was published in 2018. So probiotics are essentially ingesting certain species of bacteria. So what was done in this pilot study was that probiotics, usually with multiple species, was taken for eight weeks. So when researchers looked at the probiotic treated group and the control group who did not receive probiotics, they actually found no significant improvement in symptoms of anxiety, depression, or pain compared to the control group. So when they actually looked at both groups after eight weeks, they actually found that there was an improvement in all of these symptoms in both groups. So there was a placebo effect. So what we found was that the probiotics themselves had no effect. However, what was found was that the probiotics led to improvement in impulsivity in decision-making in fibromyalgia patients. So they did some cognitive assessments on these fibromyalgia patients in both groups, and they found that the fibromyalgia patients who were treated with probiotics for eight weeks had improved control over impulsive decisions and improved decision-making. So there was this question of, is there a neuromodulatory effect because of the change in gut microbiota from the probiotic supplementation for eight weeks, does this change the gut microbiota brain axis significantly to the extent where we're going to see improvement in cognitive functioning? So this is a very important finding. Although we didn't see significant improvement in those other symptoms, we do see changes in cognitive decision-making. What about pain and fatigue? So a popular diet that is often used is a hypocaloric diet, a diet where there is reduced calorie intake. So there are several studies that actually looked at hypocaloric diets and their influence on fibromyalgia symptoms. In this context, a hypocaloric diet is 1,200 calories per day, and the composition of the diet is such that there's 20% protein, 50% carbohydrates, and 30% fat. There were actually two studies performed that I'm going to talk about here that looked at hypochloric diets and influence on fibromyalgia symptoms. One was for five months and the other one was for six months. So the first one was a pilot study of the effects of behavioral weight loss treatment on fibromyalgia symptoms published in 2005 by Shapiro et al. This was the five-month study. The other one was the article entitled Effective Weight Reduction on the Quality of Life in Obese Patients with Fibromyalgia Syndrome, a Randomized Control Trial. So this one was a randomized control trial, as you see here, and it was published in 2012 by Senna et al. So what we found was that there were significant improvement in pain indices in both studies. More specifically, there were improvement in fatigue, quality of sleep, and decreased inflammatory markers like interleukin-6 or IL-6, that were also observed in the six-month study, whereas symptoms of depression and anxiety were improved in the five-month study. So we can see there are major, major improvements in symptoms in both of these studies. There is also a systematic review article that was published in 2019 by Silva et al. that looked at other types of diets, including the gluten-free diet. However, what was shown in the article quoted in this review article was that a gluten-free diet does not show significant improvement in pain, quality of sleep, depression or anxiety, or gastrointestinal symptoms. There's also a case report that was recently performed as well, looking at influence of diet and dietary selection on fibromyalgia symptoms. But before I go into that, I want to discuss the importance of tryptophan metabolism and the influence of carbohydrates on tryptophan metabolism. So carbohydrates, some forms of carbohydrates are known to negatively affect tryptophan metabolism. We mentioned before that tryptophan is extremely important because it is the amino acid used to produce serotonin and melatonin. Some of the types of carbohydrates that can negatively affect tryptophan metabolism are fructose. So you can think of fructose as in high fructose corn syrup. So these forms of fructose that we find in carbonated beverages, pop, those types of sweetened beverages 
can have a negative effect on tryptophan metabolism. So knowing that, we look at this case report here, entitled Fibromyalgia Syndrome, a case report on controlled remission of symptoms by a dietary strategy. This was published in 2018, and this case report is looking at one patient. So that's important to realize is that this is in one patient who did a specific dietary strategy and reported their symptoms. So one patient. So what they did was they had a diet consisting of foods high in tryptophan, as we mentioned before, that tryptophan is important for serotonin and melatonin production. They also avoided fructose, artificial sweeteners like aspartame, and they also avoided glutamate. So more specifically, what they had in their diet is the following, eggs, meat, fish, clams, etc. So you can read through these items here to see what they had in their diet. You can see here they did have almonds, even though they did contain some fructose, although they deemed it to be a small amount. And they also avoided foods with artificial sweeteners and high fructose corn syrup, like we mentioned before, but they also avoided things with sorbitol as well and glutamate and aspartame. So they avoided soft drinks and fruit juices and other confectionery. They also avoided most legumes, wheat and most cereals, and many vegetables as well. So... What they found was an improvement in the following symptoms. They found improvement in the following symptoms, including depression, fatigue, sleep quality, chronic musculoskeletal pain and stiffness. And when they returned to a diet with fructose and artificial sweeteners and legumes and certain vegetables, their symptoms, which had originally improved, actually came back and got worse. So very interesting. But again, this is a case report. So only one person reporting their symptoms. So there's no official control group where we can look at and compare, but interesting evidence and data nonetheless. So it seems to be important looking at this case report and those other previous articles we talked about before, having foods high in tryptophan seem to be important, avoiding things like fructose, avoiding certain legumes as well. And having hypocaloric diets also seem to improve fibromyalgia symptoms. So these are some tips and tricks and some evidence for dietary influences on fibromyalgia symptoms. If you found this lesson helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.